Hey, hey there, my crafty friends and family. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you are new here, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to say hi. As for today's video, I am super excited, as always, to show you guys these six must-try spring DIYs. And I absolutely love how each and every one of these turned out. So I don't know about you, but a super long intro absolutely drives me crazy, so let's get right into it. DIY number one is this realistic shovel and rake wall slash door decor. For this DIY, you will need one of the shovel and rake sand toys from Dollar Tree, and they do have little screws on them. So if you ever see the glasses, like the eyeglass fixing kits from Dollar Tree, definitely grab those up. The little screwdrivers, so handy. Like. I love the little screwdrivers. They work for the battery packs, so many different things. Just simply unscrew all of the pieces so that they are all separate. And then I went in with my white chalk paint and painted every single one of the pieces, both of the tubes, both of the handles, and both of the heads with the white chalk paint. Now you could definitely take the easier route, which I totally would have done, but I did not have any more spray paint and you can definitely spray paint these if you would like. To get the two tubes to look like real wood, I used some antiquing wax, and this is the Hello Hobby antiquing wax. Really, any antiquing wax will do. And I just use a paper towel, place a generous amount onto the tube, and then wipe it down in an up and down motion so that it gets that wood grain look. You could add multiple layers to this to make it darker or add more in some spots and less in other spots to have darker and lighter spots. But as you see, it turns out looking just like wood. To get the faux galvanized metal look, I use this Apple Barrel Pewter Gray paint that you can get from Walmart for very, very cheap and a makeup sponge. Dip the makeup sponge into your gray paint and I usually hold it with the small, like skinnier end in my hand and then sponge it on with the thicker side of the makeup sponge. When I'm dabbing the gray paint onto any of the pieces, I dab it on where it is thicker in some spots so it is darker and thinner in other spots. Here's what the shovel will look like once you have the first layer completed. And do you see how you can kind of see the shape of the makeup sponge on there? That is what you really want. Now I do the exact same thing to the rake head, which is sponging on that Apple Barrel Pewter Gray paint all over until you have it completely covered. For the two handles, they do have those spots that are kind of hard to reach with the makeup sponge, so I just paint all of the spots that I can reach with the makeup sponge, and then I use a small paintbrush and just dab the paint right into those hard to reach places. For the second coat, you will need a darker gray, and if you do not have a darker gray on hand, you could simply do what I did, and that was just mix the Apple Barrel Pewter Gray paint with some of the Dollar Tree chalkboard paint. Using the darker gray paint, you're going to simply pretty much do the same steps over again, but when you add it on to the pieces, you want to make sure you leave a little bit of the previous gray showing through, just like this. And again, for the smaller, hard to reach places on the handles, I just used a paintbrush and dabbed the darker gray paint, just like we did the previous paint. Here's where that galvanized metal really comes to life and I use the Folk Art Metallic Sterling Silver paint and you can get this at Walmart for very, very cheap. And I just use a makeup sponge again and dab that all over each of the pieces, making sure that you can still see some of the gray showing through. You could do as many layers as you would like with this. I only did that one layer, and then you just simply reattach all of your pieces by screwing those little screws back into place. This next step was definitely personal preference, but I went back in with the antiquing wax and a paper towel and just rubbed it across some of the galvanized metal pieces to kind of make them look a little bit old or rusted. Again, this is not something that you have to do, but if you would like to, you could do as little or as much distressing as you would like. Then I just take the shovel and the rake and I place them in an X shape. It doesn't matter whether the shovel is on top or the rake is on top. Again, that is just personal preference. And then I use some of the Dollar Tree Jute Twine. This is the twine from the automotive section. And I just tie it around both the shovel and the rake. And then I wrap it around both of, I guess, both directions quite a few times. Here you'll kind of see what I mean where I just take the twine and just wrap it in one direction and then I go the opposite direction wrapping those two nice and tight so they stay in that shape. 
Once you're done wrapping them nice and tight and they are no longer moving, you're just going to use your hot glue gun and place a little dab of hot glue and cut off the excess. For the florals on this, I found these really cute little blooming branches from Dollar Tree and I just cut them down and then wrapped them with some floral wire so that they were into a little bundle. I also wanted to add some florals and Dollar Tree has really stepped up their florals, but I seen these picks at Walmart for 97 cents and I had to grab a few. And again, I just cut them down and wrapped the centers with floral wire so that they were into little bundles. And then I wrap the two bundles together using some of the Dollar Tree floral wire. So for the florals, I would like to be able to change these out for each season or each holiday. So instead of gluing them down, which you could do that if you would like to keep them right in place, but I just went ahead and used some of that Dollar Tree jute twine and tied them on and wrapped it around a few times. Once it is wrapped a few times, I just cut it down and tied into a knot again so that I can easily change them out if I would like to. Now all you have to do is add whatever bow you would like and just place it right into the center and I use a pipe cleaner on my bows so that again I could change them out if I would like. And here is how this DIY turned out. You guys, look how absolutely amazing this galvanized metal look is, and that faux wood is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm telling you now, no one is going to know you made these from Dollar Tree sand toys. DIY number two is this super cute hello sign. So of course you're going to need one of the hello cutouts from the Dollar Tree. And have you guys seen the new contact papers at Dollar Tree? I love this stuff. It's shelf liner, whatever you'd like to call it. They have so many new different styles and some beautiful colors. Starting off, I used my white chalk paint and I simply painted the entire hello cutout. So the reason why I did this was so that when I add the contact paper, the color in the contact paper really pops out. You could definitely leave it unpainted if you would like. Now I just simply cut off a piece of the contact paper that I knew was wide enough to go across the Hello cutout and I just placed it onto the front of the Hello cutout and made sure that it was nice and smooth. Another thing that I highly recommend from Dollar Tree is their X-Acto knife kits. They have several different little knife heads that you can place on there and they are very, very easy to use and they are perfect for a project like this. All you have to do is take the X-Acto knife and cut off the excess of the contact paper all the way around the hello sign and also in the center of the E and the O as well. Once you have the contact paper completely cut off, you could definitely leave it as is, but you guys know me and I have to add just a little bit more as always. So I take some of the Dollar Tree Dew Twine and I just wrap it around the hello sign, kind of making it to where it is wider, like farther apart on the side where the H is and then closer together down by the O. Then I just simply cut off the excess and hot glue it into place. For the little twine bow, I'm going to use the Dollar Tree Dew Twine again, and I'm just going to spread my fingers apart. And when you do this, the width that your fingers are spread apart is how wide your bow is going to be. So just keep that in mind. And then you're going to wrap it around at least 10 times. I would say 10 or more is always better. Once you have it wrapped the amount of times you would like, cut off the excess and you want to have a nice bit hanging and then take that end and place it through your fingers and you will see how you kind of made that loop there. While well, you're going to take the end and then place it through that loop that you just made by placing it through my fingers. So then you're going to place it through the loop and just simply pull it tight. Once you have it pulled nice and tight, simply remove it from your fingers and then I like to kind of twist it a little bit and then spread out the little loops so that you can see the bow much better. And of course, somehow I lost the footage of me placing the little tails on the bow, but all I did was cut off little pieces of the twine and hot glue them to the back of the bow. I simply hot glued the bow to the O on the hello sign and this is how this DIY turned out. I absolutely love how this DIY turned out. It was so simple and easy to make and it is absolutely gorgeous spring decor. 
On to DIY number three, which is this rustic wine barrel planter. For this DIY, you'll need two of the half barrel planters at Dollar Tree, and as soon as I saw these, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. So starting off, I used a box cutter to cut a slit into the top of one of the planters, and I actually thought this was going to be a lot harder to cut than it was, and then I realized how easy it actually was. But you're just going to cut a hole into the top of one of the planters. The size of the hole really depends on how many florals you would like to put in the top of the planter. So if you're only using a few, just cut a small hole and then if you would like a lot, it obviously you would cut a larger hole. Then I used some Dollar Tree floral foam and I just hot glued it to the bottom of the planter covering the hole. Using my hot glue gun, I place a nice amount of hot glue all the way around the edge of one of the planters and then I take it and place it right on top of the second planter, making it look like one full barrel. And you guys, this is actually cute just as is if you would like to use it as a little side table or something like that. The barrel is just so cute on its own. But to add florals, just simply poke them right down into the floral foam and then I used some of the Dollar Tree Spanish moss and simply hot glued some of it along the top of the barrel underneath the florals. If you've been around my channel for any amount of time, you probably know that I love my fairy lights. I add them to so many different things. I love using them. So I just use some Dollar Tree fairy lights and I wrap them all throughout the florals. Since making this video, I found a amazing deal on Amazon for fairy lights. You actually get 32 10 foot 30 LED fairy lights for I believe $29.99. So they are under a dollar and they also have the very, very little teeny tiny battery pack that can be easily hidden. I will definitely link these down below in the description box. Once I had the lights weep throughout the florals, I simply hot glued the battery pack to the back of the barrel at the top underneath the florals. And this is how this DIY turned out. You guys, I don't know about you, but this is also screaming rustic wedding to me. These would be gorgeous centerpieces or down the aisle. It just totally screams rustic wedding. Also, it is gorgeous home decor. You could change out the flowers if you would like. I absolutely love this DIY. DIY number four is a super cute Ferris wheel planter. For this DIY, you will need two of the bicycle wheel wreath forms from Dollar Tree, and I already painted one white, but you're going to want to paint both of them white. You could spray paint them, hand paint them, however you would like. I just simply used my white chalk paint. In the previous DIY, I was talking about some fairy lights and I totally forgot that I used them in this DIY and look how long these are and look how teeny tiny that little battery pack is. Like I said, it could be so easily hidden. I wrapped both of the bicycle wheel wreath forms with the fairy lights and all I did was the outside circle. You could do more if you would like. For the base on this little Ferris wheel, I use this piece of wood that is from Dollar Tree. I just had it painted black from a different project and I just used what I had on hand. There's no reason to go buy a new piece when you could just paint one that you already have. And as you can see, I just used my white chalk paint and I painted the entire piece of wood white. At Dollar Tree, usually in the wedding section or the baby shower section, you can find these little white tin buckets and they come three in a pack and I used two of those packs. Then I just take a chibi brush and I believe it was my moss chalk paint and I dry brush across the whole entire tin bucket, leaving some of the white to show through. I did this dry brushing on all of the tin buckets, then I take one of the buckets, add a decent amount of hot glue onto the bottom, and then place it right in the center of that wood base. I recently found this multi-purpose cement adhesive glue from Dollar Tree, and you guys, this stuff is amazing. This is something else I would highly recommend. All you need is a tiny little bit onto your surface, and then I also added some hot glue for the immediate hold. Once I have my glue all on the bicycle wheel wreath form, I'm going to place it right onto that base, making sure that it is also right up against that little bucket that we glued in the center of the base. 
And Dollar Tree carries these little pink clips, which are amazing for a project like this. Once it is dry, I go ahead and remove the clip and then do the exact same thing to the other side, adding both of the glues and then gluing it to the base, making sure that it is touching and right up against the bucket. You could also add a little bit more hot glue once it is placed onto the base for an extra hold as well. When you buy the little buckets from the Dollar Tree, they already have these little white strings in them. So I went ahead and just used that, tied it to the bucket handle, and then tied it where I would like it to be on the Ferris wheel. Then I just take my hot glue gun and add a dab of hot glue onto the bucket and glue the other side of the Ferris wheel to the bucket. And just cut off any of the excess string that you have hanging over. You're just going to repeat the same steps with the rest of the buckets by simply tying the string onto the bucket handle, then tying the string to the Ferris wheel. And the reason why the string is not sliding when we just tie it right onto the Ferris wheel is because we wrapped it with fairy lights and that is stopping the string from falling down. But say you're doing yours without fairy lights, go ahead and just add a dab of hot glue where you are placing your string and that will keep it nice and in place. And as you can see with some of the buckets, I did use a little bit of hot glue and glue it to some of the spots on the Ferris wheel just so that the bucket would stay facing forward and not turn sideways. Once you are done adding all of your buckets, and you can do as many or as little as you would like, I just take the battery pack on one side and place it through the bicycle wheel wreath forms so that both of the battery packs were on the same side. Using my hot glue gun, I add a little dab of hot glue onto one of the battery packs and then I glue both of the battery packs together and then I glue the battery packs to the back of the bucket. And do you see what I mean? Look how little that battery pack is. You can definitely hide it right behind that bucket and no one will see it. Using some of the Dollar Tree Spanish Moss, I just place a little bit into each one of the buckets. Then you could add whatever florals or greenery that you would like and this DIY is done. I added some succulents and my goodness, I am obsessed with this DIY. I absolutely love it and look how gorgeous it is at night with those lights on. This is definitely by far one of my favorite DIYs ever and you can change out the florals for each season or each holiday, which makes it even better. Every day, I cannot wait until I can turn the lights on at nighttime because it is just so pretty. And speaking of pretty, on to the next DIY, which is this huge cherry blossom tree. For this DIY, you will need as many of the dogwood or cherry blossom picks from Dollar Tree as you would like. I would definitely say the more the better though, so use as many as you can. Now I'm just taking the picks one at a time and I'm just bending out the branches on each one of them so that they have more of a natural tree branch look. This will also make your tree stand up taller and be wider as well. And again, you will do this to all of your picks and I used 10 of these Dollar Tree picks for my tree. Next, you're going to simply take all of the picks one at a time and place them in your hand and you're going to kind of stagger them as you go, making some of them longer and some of them shorter. You will kind of see here if you look down by the bottom of each of the picks on the stems, you see how some of them are longer and some of them are shorter. I wanted this to look like it had a natural tree trunk at least as much as possible, so I'm going to use some of the floral tape from Dollar Tree and I place it up at the top of the trunks on the picks and I'm just going to wrap it around the picks very, very tightly so that once I have it completely wrapped, it will look like one big tree trunk and it will all be one piece. Once you have the trunk completely wrapped with the floral tape, it will look like this and you could leave it like this if you would like, but of course I have to be like really picky. So I just mixed up some paint and I just made it look as close as I can to the stems that are already on the floral picks so that it blended in and really looked like the tree trunk. For the flower pot, I just used a flower pot that I had on hand, but I wanted to change up the color because I have a lot of this moss 
green color in my spring decor. So again, I just mixed up a color that I like and just painted the entire flower pot with that moss color. Once you have it completely painted, it will look like this and look at that moss color. I absolutely love it. I do want to give it a little bit more dimension, so I'm using a chippy brush from the Dollar Tree and my chalk paint in the color Castle, and I do a nice heavy dry brushing across the entire flower pot until I like how it turned out. Dollar Tree is carrying this absolutely beautiful lace ribbon. They have it in a few different styles, and I just cut off a piece, add a little dab of hot glue to the top of my pot, and then I just wrap it around the top of the pot and hot glue it into place. Now I'm just going to place a piece of the Dollar Tree of Floral Foam right down inside the pot and this actually fit right in here perfectly. Now you can take your tree and simply push it right down into the floral foam that is inside your pot. And then to add a little bit more weight to this, I use some of the Dollar Tree little white pebbles and pour it right into the top of the flower pot. At this point, you could wrap the tree with fairy lights if you would like. I didn't show that because I figured you guys knew how to do that, but look how gorgeous and how cute this DIY turned out. Again, just like the others, I absolutely love how this DIY turned out. It stands at almost four feet tall and it is absolutely gorgeous. And I do apologize about the shakiness of the camera. Some of you do know that I am an above knee amputee, so it's a little bit hard to stand up and get these good shots for you guys. And um, hello, do you guys see how absolutely stunning this tree is if you have those fairy lights on? For the next DIY, we have this super cute wishing well. For this DIY, you will need a pack and just a few of another pack, so technically two packs of the Tumbling Tower Blocks from Dollar Tree. For the bottom of the Wishing Well, I'm going to use one of the white foam boards from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to place the Tumbling Tower Blocks in an octagon shape, and then I take my pencil and I mark all the way around each one of the little Tumbling Tower Blocks so that I have a circle shape that I can cut out. Once you have your circle piece of foam board cut out, now you're going to take the tumbling tower blocks again and add some hot glue and place them right back in that octagon shape right onto the foam board. Once you have the first octagon shape down, you're going to start with the second one, and when you add your tumbling tower blocks, you want to place the center of the tumbling tower block on the little gap that is on the previous tumbling tower block octagon shape. It's a little hard to explain, but you guys can definitely see what I'm doing, and all I'm doing is placing the tumbling tower blocks again into an octagon shape, and you're going to do as many of these as you would like. This is going to be the walls on your wishing well. Now I'm going to take six of the tumbling tower blocks and glue two of them together, creating three sets of two. You will repeat this process two times so that you will have six two sets of blocks. Then take the six sets of two blocks and you're going to glue three of those two sets together, making two longer pieces. Now I take four of the tumbling tower blocks and I glue two of them going long ways and I do the same with the other two as well. Once you have those two pieces completed, add some hot glue down at the bottom and then you're going to glue that smaller piece onto the bigger pieces that we made right in the center at the top. And I do the exact same thing with the other two pieces, gluing the smaller one in the center up at the top. These are going to be the side walls to our wishing well. So now I'm just going to add a dab of hot glue onto the bottom of the side piece and then glue it to the top part of the wishing well. And of course, I do the exact same thing with the second piece and that is gluing it to the top side of the wishing well. For the roof, I'm going to use these huge jumbo craft sticks that I got at Walmart. These are amazing to work with. They cut super, super easy. And like I said, they are absolutely huge. 
I'm going to simply cut them in half. They are 10 inches long, so just cut them in half at the five inch mark and you will have it perfectly cut in half. I cut five of the jumbo popsicle sticks in half and then I take one and just cut it down to where it is just two little pieces and you'll see why here in a second. It does not have to be perfect. You just want smaller pieces that you can glue down onto your roof. Take the five craft sticks that you cut in half and place them nice and even in one straight line and then you're going to take that small little piece of the craft stick that we cut down and you're going to add some hot glue onto the back and place it onto the larger craft sticks, keeping them together. And I did add two of these little cut down pieces to both of the rooftop parts. And again, you are going to want to make two of these, one for each side of your wishing well. Before I add my roof on, I wanted to have a little bit more of a surface to adhere to, so I take two more of the tumbling tower blocks and I glue them horizontally at the top of both of the side pieces. Using my hot glue gun, I add a decent amount of hot glue at the top part of the rooftop and I do this on both of the rooftop pieces right away because you're going to kind of glue them together as well. So now just take them and place them right onto the tumbling tower blocks, making sure that they are at a peak. This next step, again, is definitely personal preference. I wanted the rooftop to have a little bit better of a finish, so I'm using these bamboo sticks that I got off of Amazon. They are in my Amazon store. I will definitely have them linked down below. And I just cut them down, add some hot glue, and place one on either side of the rooftop. And I feel like this really gives it so much more of a finished look. For the handle, I'm going to use a Dollar Tree dowel rod. You could also get dowel rods from Walmart for much cheaper now, but all I'm going to do is cut it at seven and a half inches, and these are really easy to cut. I just kind of score it with my scissors a few times, going and like spinning it around as I kind of score it, and then it will just kind of break in half, and sometimes you can just bend them in half, but they are very easy to cut. I sanded it down so that there wasn't any sharp jagged pieces and then I take another piece and I cut it down at two inches and then I also cut one at one inch so you're going to want a seven and a half inch piece a two inch piece and a one inch piece and again use your sandpaper to make them nice and smooth Now you're going to want to kind of hold the seven and a half inch piece horizontally in your hand, add a dab of hot glue on the very end, then take the two inch piece and you're going to glue that vertically onto the horizontal seven and a half inch piece. Again, it's easier to watch than to explain. And now I'm just adding a dab of hot glue on the bottom of the two inch piece and then I'm going to glue the one inch piece horizontally on the vertical two inch piece. So you have a horizontal seven inch piece, a vertical two inch piece, and then a horizontal one inch piece. And once you have all of the three pieces glued together, you have this super cute, perfect little handle. Now you can paint or stain whatever you would like to do. I went ahead and spray painted mine. I'm sorry I didn't put that in the video, but it was super, super cold. And to be honest, I just didn't want to be out there freezing my butt off trying to film as I'm spray painting it. So next, I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue onto the handle. And then I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Jew Twine again, glue it down to the handle, and then wrap it around that handle part as many times as you would like. Again, this is also personal preference. I wrapped mine quite a few times so that I had a little bit gathered up at the top of the handle. Once you are done wrapping the twine around your handle, again, as much as you would like, make sure that you leave a decent amount hanging when you cut it off so that you can tie it to your bucket when you're ready. And speaking of buckets, again, I'm going to use those little white buckets from Dollar Tree. I love the fact that they come in a three pack and they are just so useful, but I wanted to make it just a little bit more, I guess stand out a little bit more because it was also white. So I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Jew Twine and I just wrap it around the bucket a few times. You could also paint the bucket or use a different bucket if you would like, but once you're done wrapping the twine, cut off the excess, hot glue it down, and here's how the bucket will look once you are done. 
Now with the excess twine that you left hanging on the wishing well handle, you're going to simply tie it right to the bucket handle nice and tight. Cut off any of the excess and look how cute this is already turning out. I am loving this DIY. When it comes to attaching the handle, I used my glue gun and I placed a little bit of hot glue right where those edges are on the two blocks and where the one block meets. And then I just take my little handle and place it right on top of that hot glue. I thought that my bucket was just a little bit too low, so I hurried up and twisted it around so that it was up a little bit higher and then add whatever florals or succulents you would like. I did succulents and here's how this DIY turned out. I think this DIY turned out so stinking cute. I absolutely love that this could be used for all year round decor. You could definitely change out the decor or the florals for each season or each holiday. I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. And if you're not following me over on TikTok, you definitely want to do so. There is new uploads daily, live tutorials, and so many more DIYs. And if you like the content you've seen here today, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye!